All right, today we're gonna to talk about the 10 people or departments who can help you in the role. And so this episode is about the 10 people who honestly, you could call it maximizing player development or getting your department to grow uh, without another uh, employee. I did that for six years and I realized, you know what, some of the things I wanna get done, I need an extra set of eyes and so you make relations with these people and these are the 10 people who will help you in the role. Number one, your strength coaches. Shout out to all the strength coaches I work with. They will not only help you in the role, they will help you also with workouts and other things. But um, strength coaches are huge. Um, they're always there. They're always there. The first uh, four people I'm gonna talk about are literally always there with the players. And so strength coaches, they have workouts. I've been fortunate to work with some and they tell me how the work, workouts go. Or I'm able to say, hey, so-and-so had this happen in their family. Watch them do the workout. What do you think? Um, but they always have eyes on the players. They know what's going on before the coaches find out. And they're there while the coaches on the road recruiting. So strength coaches, building relationships with strength coaches has helped me so much in the role because we're able to share stuff with each other. We're able to see things. They're like, hey, you know, I've had strength coaches. Ed, you might want to go check out on so-and-so. I don't know what's happening, but, you know, this lift, they, they weren't who they were. And so then I'm able to go sit down with so-and-so and find out. Or they're able to tell me. I may say, hey, how, how is, you know, how's the freshman transition to be away? Oh, he does a great job in the workout, whatever. He does a great job connecting with teammates, different things like that. We had conversations. I'll go down. I've been part of meetings. We have strategic conversations about different players, what we're seeing. So strength coaches, that, that's the group uh, that will help you. Um, a lot in this role. Now, this this order is not, uh, it's just the top 10. It's not any particular order. But yeah, make relations with your strength coaches. They will help you out a ton. Trust me. Shout out to all the strength coaches I work with. Number two, sports med. Sports med. Yes, the training staff, um, they also spend, this is the second group that spends a lot of time with players. If players are there doing anything, sports med is there, just like the strength coaches. And so, you want to get to know them. Um, one thing that they, what I've always done in the role is I like to go down there and spend time with players who are injured or players who are needing extra treatment, especially players who are injured for an, an extensive amount of time because they feel disconnected from the team. It's tough. I've been injured before. It's, it's just tough when I play. Um, and so I'm able to go down there, but I'm able to talk to the trainer, the head trainer or the trainers work with them in rehab. How are they doing? How are they feeling? What are you hearing? You know, we're able to share stuff, you know, hey, this is what I'm hearing when he's in my office. What is he telling you? And of course, if there's anything confidential, we don't share that. But um, yeah, they've been huge helps and shout out to everybody I work with, specifically my guy, Doc O'Shea. Doc O'Shea is incredible, incredible work with. He's been in it for a long time. He was in it when Coach Bill Belichick got his first job. But even have a conversation with Doc about how guys are coming in. Is, and once again, it's like strength coach. Hey, Ed, you may want to talk to so-and-so. So-and-so may be frustrated with an injury. Or so-and-so may be down. And we're able to spend time or, hey, you know, hey, how you doing? Whatever it may be. I also was able to help our sports med department when, you know, they needed someone to go here for physicals or they needed an extra hand. Always was able to help because it gave me that one-on-one -on -one time with players. So shout out to all the sports med staff, uh, trainers I work with in my career. Hello, hello, hello. My name is Ed Jones II. I am the host of this podcast, The Player Development Pod. I am also the founder of Beyond the Field, where we create impactful player development professionals like yourself and programs. And so really, really excited to dive into this. This episode talks, 10, talks about 10 people out of the 35 people that I have on an external checklist that I share with people in my course. So I wanted to bring the top 10 to you. If you want to know the rest of the people on this list, please click in the show notes. You'll see something that says uh, external checklist workshop. Let me know. We'll get the rest of those names to you because they you need to know everybody who can help you in the role. All right. Number three, your nutrition or dietitian staff, your nutrition staff, but your dietitians. Uh, and, and shout out to the dietitians. People call them nutritionists so much. And they're actually are dietitians. There's a difference. I, I learned that um, working at Baylor with Kiara and J-Bud. So shout out to y'all uh, so much for letting me know the difference. So, but anyway, shout out, uh, sorry. Anyway, the third group or people that will help you in the role is your nutrition staff. Um, they are also spending time with them as well. And they just know a lot because what happens is all these people, the player development role, the strength coaches, sports med, nutrition, and I'll bring up academics next. We all spent so much time with the players that we're, they're talking to us. They're letting us know what's going on in their life, a lot of personal things. So the nutrition staff, 
they have to tell these guys when they have to gain weight, what they have to do to lose weight. They spend a lot of time with them, so they're here and they're at meals with them. And some of the most vulnerable times people have to talk is when they're eating. Eating was one uh, in between lifts or in between practice and any breaks at those two is when players talk the most. But meals is huge, huge. You hear a lot. And they do a great job of remembering what's happening. And I've walked into many meetings or many times I've walked into the breakfast room and they're like, Ed, I need to talk to you. This is what's going on. Or Ed, well, you know, how is so-and-so doing upstairs? And we share that information as well. Um, they spend a lot of time with these <laughs> with the players. I help them at halftime get stuff out. But they are incredible people. They will help you in the role. Number four, I already talked about it. I said academics. Academics is the next group that you need. They will help you so much in the role. Shout out to all the academic people I work with. It's a lot of you all. Um, and I don't, I'm not going to say names because I don't want to miss. I actually called a few of you all last week because I was having uh, some withdrawals. And you know who you are. Um, but yeah, shout out to academic staff. Once again, another group that spends a lot of time with the players. Now, they know the players. They know where they are. They know their frustrations. You're hearing them about their frustrations or their joys in class. They understand what's happening on the campus. So academics has that connection of what's happening in the program and on campus. So they are our liaisons to the campus because of their the work that they do. And so they're able to, hey, you know, Ed, this is what's happening on campus good or bad with these players. They bring professors in. I talked about that in a uh, couple episodes back. They bring professors over so we can celebrate with professors. And then I'm able to get to know the professors. And it's just been good. Academics has been huge for me, um, especially in the, you know, when I was working in the recruiting process. They're with you the entire time. They're letting you know, hey, so-and-so is very close to graduating. Ick, you sit down with these guys. I've had it to a place where we had four guys at one university I was at that were really, that should have been graduating. And just by academics letting me know who these guys were, I was able to sit down and have meetings with them weekly to help them get past the finish line. What do you need to do past the finish line? What's going on? So shout out to the academic staff because those four guys got past the finish line. And that's just something, once again, helping me in the role. And it helps by them doing that helps provide more value for my role because my coach sees, hey, he worked together with academics to help these guys graduate. All right. Number five, compliance, compliance. I did this in the tip right here, player development tip about working with compliance. Uh, and a lot of people think compliance on the popos. I'm actually going to talk about the popos next. But uh, compliance, if you work with a great compliance department with com great compliance professionals, it can be really, really good. I was fortunate to work with three really good compliance departments at the University of Houston, University of Kansas, and Baylor University. And they helped me in the role. They helped me know the rules. Like, what can I do? They help with programming. I would go to them, hey, this is what I want to do. You can't do that. But this is how you can do it. Or if you want this outcome, you got to do it this way. Hey, I want to get shirts. This is how you get it done. Or you know, hey, Ed, here's this new rule you need to know. Can you let the players know? Ed, can you reach out to the players? Or, hey, we want our players to work on this uh, at a camp. Hey, Ed, do this. They need to fill this out. So it's a lot of help from the compliance department. Um, once again, get to know them. Get to know them. Uh, <laughs> they do know all the rules, and they have to be the, you know, the people who make sure everybody follows them. But um, they are great people, and they will definitely help you in the role. Number six. <laughs> Number six, the police department. The police department. That could be campus and local, but get to know the people of the police department. Uh, things happen. Yeah, I don't need to go deep into that. Things happen, but it's good to know them because there are a lot of, you know, measures where I had calls. I got calls before other people in uh, the athletic department got calls. Hey, this you need to know this. Hey, can you come talk to so-and-so? If they do this, it's going to ha have to happen. Or we see so-and-so here and we know y'all don't want so-and-so here. I appreciate it. So, um, the police department has, has been really, really good. I've also used them for programming, coming in and talk to our players about, you know, their rights. What do you need to do if there's a, a you know, a traffic stop or you pulled over or whatever, like, or you hit someone, what do you need to do? Insurance, are you not, like, it's just so much that they can teach uh, the players in certain situations. So getting to know them helps as well. That's just another set of eyes around the entire city. And it was very beneficial. Shout out to all um, the officers I work with. Uh, at the University of Houston, I actually know the chief of police from Houston, from working at the University of Houston. And in Kansas, we had great, great officers uh, there. Um, they know who they are and just did an incredible job helping us in our programming. Um, great, great people. At the University of Kansas, we had a great officer who worked for the campus. I can't think of his name. Uh, I want to say Officer Aquiano. Uh, he's Poppy's, Poppy's 
Tacos and Q. Uh, if you listen to this, you know who you are, but he was in. incredible to work for, work with, uh, work with, sorry, I didn't work for him, but he helped us big time in campus. He let us know when things were going well. He helped us in certain situations where there were campus, like the towing people on campus were really trying to come after our players and some of the stuff they weren't doing was great. And he allowed us, he helped us. He had our back and it was really, really good to help some of our players. Um, so yeah, make, make relations with the police department. All right, number seven, housing, housing. Get to know your housing people. Why? Because your athletes will always move on campus at some point. And housing people are great to work with um, because situations happen. Once again, there's another set of eyes that can help you. They're going to let you know, hey, you know, eh, can you talk to so-and-so about their bill or cleaning up or not putting trash outside here or their guest? And they I always love that because they would reach out to me before it became a big issue, right? I'm trying to, in the role, keep as much off the head coach's desk because once it gets there, it is a problem. And a lot of times the head coaches are not trying to hear, oh, well, this wasn't that big or someone made it bigger than what it is. So shout out to the housing people. Um, they also would help if, hey, we need something here real quick. We got somebody moving in a little earlier than we thought so. How can we work this out with their scholarship and their payments? Helped out big time. So. Knowing the housing people, shout out to Chassie Taylor at the University of Houston. I was an RA under her when I worked at the University of Houston. She was huge in helping me with our players. Um, it's just great having relationships with those people. Once again, another set of eyes, another set of eyes. What's going on? What's happening this weekend? Y'all got any parties here? What, you know, they let me know what's going on. So, hey, these are people that can help you in a row. Uh, number eight, admissions. Admissions. Um, and I don't do too much with admissions. I didn't do too much, but they're good people to know because admissions kind of incorporates not only admissions, but the orient orientation tour and like your campus tours, like that whole group right there. Um, but it's good to know them as well um, because if any walk-ons, right? That's the big one. Walk-ons, they're going to have to do it there on their own. And so when you have walk-ons, you're going to have 85 scholarship players, about 40 year players are going to be, 35 to 40 year players are going to be walk-ons. And so getting to know the admissions, um, department is huge because you're going to have to help walk-ons in some way because the scholarship players is kind of worked out you're going to work with admission admissions on that as well um, but being that person who can they'll ask you hey can you get so-and-so to get this transcript and then you could call the player hey you know can you get this in can somebody at your school get this in so having that relationship with admissions was always good um, specifically with the walk-ons but you find ways uh, with scholarship players as well just having that person once again a set of eyes or a number to call they just want a number to call they know they can't call the head coach sometimes they can't reach other people but I always had them look they on um, once I saw admissions I am answering it uh, number nine is equipment and equipment honestly is one of the groups so that'd be the next group I would add that's always around players so strength coaches sports med nutrition uh, academics and equipment equipment's always around uh, the players and it's interesting because the three places I've worked uh, someone from equipment always wants to do player development but I always love the equipment because they see the real players right they get to know the players like who's coming down who's not th who's you know throwing their stuff at them who's just not treating people right uh, and those who do treat people right so it's always both and I always wanted to know who's doing it right and who's doing it wrong but they just they, they're another set of eyes hey can you talk to so-and-so man he, he's coming down he demands stuff and i know that's not our culture or you know so-and-so whenever we have this stuff he's kind of this this whatever or hey so and so's doing an incredible job he always comes down he helps us whenever we need it and so just having equipment equipment's huge shout out to everybody who worked in equipment uh with shout out to my guy dan reeves that's my guy uh, from the University of Houston. So equipment, we, that's another group you need to know. They have a lot of staff, a lot of students, a lot of eyes. These students are on campus with them and they may come and practice and let you know, hey, you know, so-and-so, can you talk to so-and-so, you know, in class, you know, he's doing a good job or, you know, the teacher's kind of picking on them or, hey, you know, if you could just kind of tell them just be a little less rowdy, whatever. Um, they're another set of eyes. They know what's going. A lot of equipment people know what's going to happen before, before, before the, uh, lack of a better word, the dam breaks. And so uh, knowing them, that's another set of eyes. And then number 10, this is a group that is not in the athletic department or on campus. And those are your barbers, your barbers in the community. And this one's a big one. Most of them ain't going to tell you what the player is talking about, which is fine. Some will. But they let you know the culture of not only city, but the team. They let you know how players are feeling. They're not going to say which specific players, which is fine. And once again, I don't put any of these people in a situation where I'm walking up to them like, hey, you need a rat. You need to tell me what's going on. It happens naturally because they care about the players. I care about the players and we just want what's best for the players. And so the barbers kind of let you know, like the culture of the city, the culture of your team, what the guys are talking about. Man, you know, 
Like, for instance, Fall Camp, man, these guys, man, they've been talking about a break, man. They really want to break for Fall Camp. They, they want to do well, man, but it's been, it's been a lot of hitting. It's hot, man. A break will really go a long way. Awesome. Thank you. I go to the head coach. Hey, can we get a break for these guys? Where'd you hear that? Oh, I just heard in the community they need a break, right? Whatever, right? Or they're saying, hey, man, the community, man, the community feeling like y'all ain't been out there, man. Like y'all ain't at the schools no more. Y'all used to do this. Y'all, you know, boom, appreciate it. Let me get in the community. But barbers are another set. And there's normally every city I've been in is two barbers, right? Like it's two barbers that most of most of the players go to that are near. Um, and just getting to know those barbers. I went to either one of those barbers uh, when I was in those cities. And so that's the 10th person that can help you in the role. And so those are the 10 people that can help you in the role. Once again, I don't go and ask them to rap, but they help you in the role because they want to help the players. Y'all come together and it makes the player development department larger in a way. OK, they don't know. You know, you're not telling them, hey, I want you to be a part of the player development department. They just doing their job. But it makes your reach in the player development as a player development professional even greater, not only in the program, the athletic department, but the campus and the city. Once again, if you want all 35, all 35 um, names that are on the external checklist, go down to the show notes, click on the external checklist workshop, and I will get those to you. Thank you so much for checking out the player development pod. Oh, forgot about the tip of the week, tip of the week. Campus visit plan. Player development tip of the week is to have a campus visit plan. So what you're gonna do with this, going back to these relationships you built on campus, you find out what I always find out is what they want to do, what they want to study. Academics is already finding that out and then what one of their passions is. And so you're finding this campus visit plan. Recruiting's already has an on campus visit plan. I'm just adding the player development aspect of it. Do I need to be with them when they go to that school? Hey, when they come in my office and I talk to them about former players, Hey, these former players do what you want to do. You're interested in, in being a, a chef. This player did this. You're interested in being a chief of police. This player did this. You're interested in being a coach. That player did that. Right. So you're creating a plan based off what you know about the players. Everybody's already put it together on campus. Recruiting staff has done that. Academics has done that. You're looking at it and saying, what can I add to this campus visit? What can I add to this player development? Uh, sorry, what can I add player development wise to this campus visit to make this a memorable visit for the athlete? Y'all know what to do. Go out and create generational impact. Don't wait. Create that generational impact. When? When? Oh, yeah. Today. Y'all have a great one. And check out these videos here or there or here or all around. Have a great day.